everyone, today I want to introduce to you one of my most fun birds that I get to work with and her name is Kevin. That's right, she is a she and she is a crested caracara and these guys come from parts of the north, central and southern parts of America. Um, they are absolutely incredible looking birds and she isn't what you think she is. Caracaras are actually part of the falcon family so you're looking at basically a large tropical falcon and yet to the eye she looks mostly like a hawk with these big yellow feet and that huge beak and then if you saw these guys running around on the ground, which is what they prefer to do, you'd actually think she was something closer to a vulture. So we've got a bird here that likes to nest up in the tree like a hawk. They build these big stick-based nests. She likes to run around all day looking for food. Yes. <laughs> and then um, genetically, she's actually in the falcon family. So they're quite incredible creatures. She's got these really striking black and white barring all the way down her neck and down onto her back and then she's got that absolutely gorgeous tail as well um, and that black cap that she's got on top of her head you actually see right from when they're a chick they have that black cap all the way through they are one of my favorite birds to work with because they're highly intelligent Kevin is 10 years old this year, which sounds quite old, but she could live up to 40 years in captivity. So she's a bit like a rowdy teenager most of the time, to be honest. Um, she has that lovely little crest sticking on the back of her head. It's almost like a little flat cap. And when she's feeling cross or excited, that sticks up in the air. She also has absolutely amazing eyelashes, which is just something I like to point out. Um, if I bring her closer, you'll be able to see that she's got these stunning eyelashes. And then she's got this amazing coloured face. She's orange at the minute because she's pretty excited and she's wondering if there might be a bit of food. But you will actually notice this bulge here. This is her crop. Um, and her crop is basically a storage area. Look, she's changing colour again. Can you see she's going yellow? Um, <laughs> literally before your eyes. Uh, her crop is basically her storage bag uh, for all her food. So when she eats, and I flew her this afternoon, all her food goes down into her crop and it expands out in the front of her chest here. And then overnight she will process this food, it will swirl around in her gizzard and then she'll digest it properly. Like all meat-eating birds, she will process her food and she'll create a pellet. So we always think of owls creating pellets, but hawks, falcons, vultures, even the Corvid family make pellets of sorts and that will basically she will create a pellet when she's digested everything so all the bone and the fluff of whatever she's eaten um, that she can't digest that will come back up and she will basically lean forward and shake her head and it just pops out and then tomorrow around lunchtime she'll be around ready for her next meal so I can read a lot from her mood and um, from her face and from the way she acts and the way she holds her feathers now what's really interesting about these guys is they spend probably 80% of their day running around on the floor. She has got wings, she's actually okay at flying. However, they're well known for their low level flight, they stay quite low to the ground um, and when they can, which is most of the time, they actually prefer to run and walk around and you can see she's got these amazing long legs. Um, she's actually designed for running. When I watch her, I kind of think of a little velociraptor and it's where you sort of see the link between dinosaurs, I think, when you see birds like this running around on the ground. Getting her to actually fly um, is a real challenge because she's so intelligent, she knows that actually there's no point. She can quite happily run around on the ground after me and she's still going to find pieces of food. If I put her onto a perch and walk off, she jumps down and then she runs along the ground after me. So it's a little bit like having a very strange dog. Um, but on a windy day, she actually does get a little bit of lift and she can do a bit of flying. Although, to be honest, she doesn't usually tend to plan where she's going. Um, so she has a bit of like bumping into things um, on her landing because she tends to misjudge everything. But just like all my other birds, she's a captive bred bird of prey, so she didn't come from the wild. Um, and like I say, she should have a long life. Even in the wild, these guys do really well. And the oldest recorded caracara is about 21 years old. So she's sort of halfway through a natural lifespan. However, I already have another caracara who you're going to meet in a later video, and she's 33. Um, so I would expect quite a long life from Kevin yet. Now you might be wondering why Kevin is called Kevin when I keep 
saying she and her and there's a very simple reason for it. Um, when Kevin was about seven years old she laid some eggs and to that point we'd always thought that she was a boy so it turned out that Kevin was a girl and um, so unfortunately she'd already knew what her name was and I didn't want to change it and um, yeah um, she knows she's called Kev or Kevin um, and that's what she tends to respond to um, so there she is it's Kevin the female crested cara cara they eat all sorts of different things in their diet in fact they are to a degree omnivores but they mainly focus on a mixture of rodents and snakes and lizards and turtles they might even eat small alligators um, they will eat whatever they can get their hands on so whether that's a dead rabbit on the ground that they don't have to chase or whether it's a rodent that they see running past them these guys will try and catch it and basically they're just massive opportunists so they'll be a scavenger when they want to be just like a vulture and you will often see them hanging around with vultures but if they have to hunt then they can do that too they're actually of least concern as it stands however they are suffering some degree of persecution and habitat loss so you know things may change in the coming years but as it stands they're incredibly intelligent birds they like to be on the go all day um, and they're very very versatile now you can hear she's talking at me she's making that little croaking noise they're well known for a much bigger noise and it's called a rattle and what they do is they make a big noise a bit like a seagull but they make the sound come out of them even louder by throwing their head back and opening up their vocal cords in their throat and they basically swing their head back and they give a good old shout um, I'm very lucky in that she's very quiet and although she likes to chat to me um, she doesn't tend to shout unless seagulls fly over she hates seagulls <laughs> Because they fly so much lower on the ground than vultures, they're often the first onto um, a carcass because they get in before the vulture does. The national bird of Mexico is actually the crested caracara. So if there's anyone from Mexico watching, this is your beautiful national bird. And I would be pretty proud to have one of these guys one of, um, as my national bird.